everyone, it's Lily, and welcome back to my channel. So today, obviously, as you can probably tell from the title of this video, I am going to be doing a player analysis for the Cincinnati Reds. So first off, I wanted to say a few things before I get started into the actual analysis. Number one, I wanted to say that I am not going to analyze every single player on the roster. There's a lot of players on the 40-man roster and even the active roster whom I just haven't seen play and therefore I can't analyze them as well as other players that I've seen a lot. Number two, this is going to be a three-part analysis. So I'm going to make three different videos. The first video is going to be batters or hitters. The second video is going to be pitchers. And the third video is going to be substitutes, which are pinch runners, pinch hitters, and relief pitchers. And number three is that this is based on my personal experiences. I know you guys have your own opinions and feel free to express those opinions down below in the comments. But these are my opinions, so please do not attack me on the things that I say. Thank you. Okay, so this video is going to be all about the batters. So I'm just going to be going through the starting lineup, not including the pitchers. So there's only going to be eight players that I'm analyzing today. And I'm just going to say their name. I'm going to give a brief analysis on what they did well and what they didn't do so well, some of their highlights, and just kind of talking you through what happened over the season, and then I'm going to grade them based on a letter scale. So you guys get graded on your homework assignments in school through a letter scale, which is A, B, C, D, and F. So that's how I'm going to be grading the players. So. The first player that I am going to be analyzing is Scott Shevler. So Scott Shevler was injured for a really, really long time, but he came back pretty healthy and he did really well in the games that he did play in. He also hit a grand slam, which I'm giving him credit for that. And I think that after a full recovery of his injury, he's going to come back better and stronger than ever and I'm hoping that he does that next season. Therefore, I'm going to give Scott Shebler a C just because he was injured for a really, really, really long time and that kind of hurt the team. Okay, player number two is Jose Peraza. So Jose Peraza defensively, I feel like he did a poor job. It might be just because I am a little bit biased because I really like Zach Kozar as our shortstop, but I feel like as a shortstop defensively, he could have stopped a bunch of balls that he didn't stop. So I think that defensively, he didn't do so well. But offensively, he did really well. He's actually, I think, one of our best hitters on the team. And I think that with improvement, I think that he can do really, really, really well. So I have faith in Jose Peraza, which is why I'm giving him a B. Player number three is none other than Joey Votto. So Joey Votto, as we all know, had an off year. And trust me, I've had my off years in dance. It's not fun, but it's acceptable. It happens. And it was bound to happen to him. I mean, he's had some really, really great years. And this year was just an off year. Maybe it's because he's getting older. I mean, he is 35 years old. And maybe it's because the pitchers are getting a little bit smarter and will change up a bunch of pitches against him. But nonetheless, he is still the reigning king of on-base percentage in the National League, and therefore I am giving him a B for the season. Also because he's my favorite player and I'm really biased. I'm sorry. Player number four is A. Eugenio Suarez, also known as Gino. So Gino had a really, 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 really good year this season. I mean, he had an incredible season, no doubt about it. Defensively, I feel like he did a really, really good job because I feel like he got a lot of balls that Jose Peraza shouldn't gotten as a shortstop. 
So I think that defensively, he pretty much saved our butts. Also, hitting wise, offensively, he did so well. Like he hit so many home runs, he hit a grand slam. I am so proud of Gino and therefore I am giving him an A. Player number five, Scooter Jeanette. So I feel like Scooter had a really, really good start to the season. Like at the beginning of the season, he did super well. He was leading the National League for a little bit in batting average. I feel like he could have done a little bit better defensively, but as a hitter and on the offensive side, I feel like he did a really, really, really good job at the beginning of the year. But at the end of the year, he kind of went downhill a lot, especially with sitting out for the last two games. We knew that this whole competition between him and Christian Yelich for the batting average title was going to end up with Christian Yelich. And Honestly, I wish that Scooter could have just fought through it and he could have gotten that batting average title, but he just kind of fell a little bit downhill over the season and therefore I'm going to give him a B for the season. Player number six, Tucker Barnhart. So Tucker Barnhart, not the best hitter in the world. I mean, he had his moments. He did hit some home runs and I'll give him credit for that, but compared to Jose Peraza and Joey Votto and Scooter Jeanette and Gino, I feel like he's not the greatest hitter ever. And defensively, as a catcher, I feel like he did okay. I mean, he put up with all of our really, really bad pitching. <laughs> But I think that when it came to RBIs and the other team scoring at the plate and trying to tag them out, he could have done it a little bit quicker and a little bit more swiftly. So therefore, I'm giving Tucker Barnhart a C for this season. Player number seven, Philip Irvin. So Philip Irvin really didn't rise to the occasion until this season. And for him, some days were good, some days were bad offensively. Like he did hit a walk-off home run when I went to a game and that was a really special moment because he did get the Gatorade thrown on him and that was my first time seeing that happen. And it was just a really fun game to be at. But he did also have his off days as well. And I think defensively, he did pretty well in the outfield. I mean, he did as well as anyone else could have done in the outfield. So therefore, I'm going to give him a B for the season, just because I feel like he has a lot of potential and with training, he could come back and be a really, really, really good ball player. And lastly, player number eight, Billy Hamilton. So I know a lot of you guys have some controversial thoughts about Billy Hamilton just because he cannot hit. And trust me, I agree with you, that boy cannot hit. And honestly, I feel like there is a clear hierarchy as to what you need to do in order to be a good, well-rounded ball player. First of all, you need to learn how to hit. Second of all, you need to learn how to get on base. And third of all, you need to learn how to run. And he's in that third spot because he can run really well. But you can't run unless you get on base, unless you can hit. So basically his running is kind of pointless. But that doesn't mean that I'm not giving him any credit on his success this season. He is one of the only players that I know who could probably turn a single into a double. Some of the other players on the team, especially the slow runners, wouldn't even think of going for a double, but Billy Hamilton just does it. Also, his stolen bases are pretty high up there as well. And let's not attack him on his defensive side. In the outfield, he is incredible. He robs literally so many people of home runs and he can save our team defensively by doing that. So therefore, I am giving Billy Hamilton a D for the season. Alrighty, you guys, that is it for the Cincinnati Reds batter analysis. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below video ideas. Also, please comment down below your thoughts. What did you think of this analysis, and what would you rate the players that I have rated? Also, please answer the question of the day. Who will win the World Series, the Boston Red Sox or the LA Dodgers? 
please comment those down below and I will see you next time. Bye!